Hi, today I'm doing a Beanie Baby deeper dive. This is the second part to my Beanie Baby deep dive, which I've already done. That is out on my TikTok, it's a series. I've also put it on my YouTube. I put the whole series together in one video. So if you watch that first, it'll pro this will probably make a little more sense. But I'll try to give like a quick recap. So in the Beanie Baby deep dive, I talk about what made Beanie Baby different than any other toy in the 90s and what created the frenzy around Beanie Baby. And that is that people used to believe Beanie Babies were going to be worth thousands of dollars someday. My family and myself included as a child believed that Beanie Babies were going to pay for my college at some point. And why did people believe they were going to cost so much money? Well, because it was a big marketing ploy. So what Ty Warner, the owner of Ty, who creates Beanie Babies, what he did is he would retire Beanie Babies. So they'd be released and everyone would be excited to get the new Beanie Baby, but they don't stay out forever. They get retired. And then after that Beanie Baby is retired, then the idea is the value is supposed to go up, 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 because now it's a collector's item that's not for sale anymore. Um, I'm sorry, Alfie's really distracting me. Can you stop, honey? I can't talk when you're pushing the camera. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of what made Beanie Baby so like unique in the 90s and what made everybody want it. One of the things I talk about also is this couple who went to court because they were getting divorced and they could not decide on how to split up their Beanie Babies. So the judge actually had to make them uh, put all the Beanie Babies in court and then they pick them one at a time. You pick one, you pick one, you pick one and back and forth until they pass out all the Beanie Babies. So another thing I also talked about in the Beanie Baby deep dive was the fall of Beanie Baby. It really never recovered. Yes, Ty is still a company today, but it's not ever been like it was in the 90s. So today what I want to talk about is I have a little list. Okay, so I wanna find the divorce couple and see what they're up to now. Um, I wanna talk about more beanie crime that I wasn't able to touch on in the first one just because of time restraints. That's why I'm doing a YouTube this time because then I could talk. Um, then I also found out this stuff about Ty Warner. Turns out he wasn't the best. So we're gonna look into that a little more and there's kind of a lot there. And then I also want to talk about, oh my gosh, Alfie, stop, stop, don't, no, no, stop, you can't chew on that, he's really distracting me, I'm sorry, stop, I don't remember, okay, I'm just going to start on the list again, so, and I want to talk about Beanie Law, yes, there was laws that had to be passed because of Beanie and I wasn't able to touch on that again because of time restraints. That's what I'm doing on YouTube. And then another thing I got was a lot of questions in the last deep dive was um, what happened to Beanie after they relaunched because they stopped and then they relaunched in the year 2000 and I kind of ended it there. So I want to kind of look into what happened after the relaunch. So let's get into it. Okay, the first thing I want to look into is that couple. So there's this article from November 5th, 1999. <laughs> I love how it starts. Divorce is often hardest on the babies. Divvying them up can be emotional. <laughs> this morning, a frustrated Clark County family court judge ordered an Ernstwile couple, Ernstwile, I don't know that word, couple to divide up their collection of Beanie Babies one by one under his supervision in the courtroom. Maple Bear was the first to go. Because you folks can't solve it, it takes the service of a district court judge, a bailiff, and a court reporter. There was snickering among the five or six people in the gallery. The judge said, so I told them, bring the Beanie Babies in, spread them out on the floor, and I'll have them pick one each until they're all gone. <laughs> Hart Castle also invited reporters. <laughs> if you're not embarrassed to stand in front of the district court judge and ask to have your Beanie Babies divided, why should you be embarrassed for the press to be here? It's a good point. I think the judge is trying to illustrate how absurd our work can get. Two people should be able to divide up Beanie Babies collection by themselves without the help of the court. Okay, so that's the article, and so I want to find them. 
And I started with a simple Google search and all I was getting was just about this story that I just read. I wasn't finding anything nowadays. And finding Francis is going to be a lot harder than finding Harold because when they got divorced, I'm assuming she didn't keep the last name Mountain because when I searched for Francis Mountain, I found nothing. But I did a search for Harold Mountain and I did find something. Now, I went to his Facebook and before I show this, I just wanna say this is all public. Nothing I am showing is private information. So this is his Facebook page and I was trying to look at the picture of the Beanie Baby and the picture on the page. And I'm thinking, okay, it's been over 20 years. The guy has that slender build. This looks like it could be him. And so it also said the hometown where he lives was Las Vegas. He's from somewhere else, but he lives in Las Vegas. And this was a Las Vegas couple. So I think it's him. I didn't, I wasn't able to get much information. This was pretty much all I could get. And I decided let's look at his like. Cause I'm like, maybe there's some clues in his likes as to if this is really him. Johnny Cash, Rolling Stones. But these were the two that stood out to me. He liked wimp.com. I don't know what that is, but it sounds mm, kind of weird. And then I found hugging. He's a fan of hugging. And I know we don't know if this is him, but those seem like kind of like Beanie Baby vibe to me, like adult male Beanie Baby vibe. Okay, okay, okay. That's all I could really find on him. There's not much. Let's move on. I also wanted to touch more on Beanie Baby crime. So there was this case that I kind of mentioned in the Beanie Baby deep dive, but I wasn't able to like really get into it. And it was the case of Melissa Ann Stiver. I have my notes here. So this was in AP News on January 31st, 1998. She was 35 years old and she was charged with fraud and theft. Why was that? Because she had a whole Beanie Baby scam going on. And what she would do, oh, she collected over $10,609 on just Beanie Babies, by the way. So she would say that she had a rare beanie and try to sell it online. And then she would not send the items. And I feel like nowadays, if you did something like that, they'd have ways to come back and catch you. And obviously she did get caught, but she was getting away with this for a while before she did get caught. So she was arrested on February of 1998 on multiple counts of grand theft. And the way she got caught is there was a Tennessee couple and they complained they had never received their Nana the monkey and Chili the polar bear, which they spent $2,500 on for the two of them. And in the 90s, think about how much money that is. I'm not sure what it would come to with inflation, but it's a lot more than $2,500. So she, Melissa never sent the Beanie Babies and they sent the money. And you know what Melissa spent that money on? home improvement projects in her house. So she's just over here trying to live her best life scamming people like no big deal. Well, anyway, they caught her and that was just one of the stories we didn't really get to touch on. And there's so many of these. If you look up beanie crime, there's so many beanie crime stories out there. Next, I wanna talk about Ty Warner, the owner of Beanie Baby. Oh, and before I do that, I wanna talk about the pronunciation of Ty. So in the deep dive, I had a lot of comments of people saying, you know, I always pronounced it T-Y. And to be honest, I don't know the correct pronunciation, but the reason I pronounce it Ty is because it's, at, it's after Ty Warner and his name is pronounced Ty. And the second reason I pronounce it that way is whenever I see it written in articles, it's not T-Y, capital T, capital Y, it's capital T, lowercase Y, meaning it's not an acronym, it's just Ty. I could be wrong but I just wanted to say why I pronounce it that way. So let's talk about Ty Warner. There were a lot of red flags in his behavior before the incident that I'm going to talk about later. One of the things he would do, and this would upset retailers a lot, he had a lot of strict rules for who could sell beanies before 2000, before the year 2000. So if he found out retailers were offering deals, stop out, stop. If he heard um, that retailers were off offering deals like buy one, get one free, buy two, get one free, you know, whatever, he would say, you cannot sell Beanie Babies anymore because he thought that would make devalue them. And he, it was all for him, it was all about how they appeared 
because it was a marketing ploy. So their appearance, they needed to be up here. They could not be like a lower toy in his mind. And so retailers trying to do the things they always do with sales and deals to get people to come in were having the privilege of selling Beanie Babies being revoked from them from Ty Warner. The next red flag is he sent a cease and desist letter to this small Connecticut store and the name of the store was Ty Brand, Ty Brand. So it wasn't called Ty, it was called Ty Brand because the owners had two sons, Tyler and Brandon. So he just put them together and their little store was called Ty Brand and he ordered them to change their name. And the LA Times said that the sons were completely distraught that a toy company would pick on them. Such a large company would pick on their teeny little store that didn't even have the same name. And they can't afford to be doing court stuff. And so that just shows his character a little bit. The third red flag is he would encourage children to report counterfeit Beanie Babies if they found them. He did everything in his power to stop the sale of Beanie Babies outside of the jurisdiction that he set for them to be sold. Editing Kelly here. So the next thing Ty Warner did is he actually worked with Border Patrol to stop the flow of Beanie Babies across country lines. So there were Canada Beanie Babies and US Beanie Babies. Canada Beanie Babies had two tags on the bum, one in French, one in Canadian. <laughs> One in French and one in English. <laughs> okay. Um, and so because I had two tags, it would make people in the U.S. want it. It's rare. It's a collectible. It's not the one that we have. So if you tried to bring multiple beanies across the border, they were going to get confiscated from you. And then they really cracked down. And let's see, Buffalo News says March 13th, 1998, in an effort to halt unauthorized imports of Beanie Babies that were originally intended for Canada, tens of thousands of Beanie Babies were seized at the border. Most of these were in commercial vehicles and they would find them when they just did like, you know, when a commercial vehicle crosses the border, they just do the search around it and check inside and they would find Beanie Babies and seize them all. So it was only going on for three months and they found four huge shipments at the Peace Bridge and one huge shipment at Rainbow Bridge. Those are the border crossings. Editing Kelly back again. Okay, so they collected so many illegal Beanie Babies in the illegal Beanie Baby trade that they literally had to make a custom warehouse just to keep them in. So there's all those commercial vehicles that were caught and so then they started passing laws about just regular people, not just commercial people. And they said there's a limit of one item, one trademark item, so one Beanie Baby, per person in the vehicle. <laughs> they had such a problem with people trying to bring beanies in that they literally had to start making rules on how many beanies you could bring across the border. Oh, and I wanted to note, one article said that you were only allowed to bring one beanie per person across the border, but another article said you were allowed three beanies per person across the border. So I'm not sure if I was reading misinformation or if the law changed. So I wanted to note that. Ty Warner did something that upset a lot of people, and this was in September of 1999. He did a press release, and he waited till the end of the press release to just mention, oh, by the way, Beanie Baby's going to be over as of December 31st, 1999. He just put it on him. Every Beanie Baby's going to be retired. And then he's like, oh, by the way, I'm going to launch a new bear called The End. So then that created everybody wanting to get this bear called The End because they thought this was the last Beanie Baby ever. So right away, that's just another marketing ploy that he was using to get people to buy Beanie Babies. And they really believed Beanie Baby was going to be over. Why wouldn't they? That's what he said. Then on Christmas Eve, right before, just a couple days before the end of the year, he's like, you know what? Maybe we won't end Beanie Baby, guys. Maybe not. I have an idea. Let's leave it up to the public to decide. So he says we're going to end it. Nobody wants it to end. And then he's like, let's let the public vote if they really want it to end. But it wasn't the public who said they wanted it to end. Do you see what I'm saying? So this upset a lot of people. And you know what he did? 
he charged people to vote. 50 cents a vote, he charged them to cast their ballot. And he allowed people to vote multiple times, duh, because um, he gets more money. And it's mostly children voting. And so this was something that upset a lot of people. More marketing schemes, just marketing scheme, marketing scheme. And people were falling for it. They, people had spent so much time, energy, money, and had emotional connection to Beanie Baby. They didn't want it to be over. And then he's like kind of just tricking people into voting to keep it there. And they're voting multiple times and giving him money. It's just kind of messed up. Okay, remember this because it's going to come back later. He said the proceeds from the voting for bringing Beanie back, or keeping Beanie, I guess. He said the proceeds were going to the Pediatric AIDS Foundation. So just remember that. So finally the big day comes and he says the results are in. Is Beanie going to stay or is Beanie going to go away forever? Shocker, Beanie wins, they stay. But he gives no details, shows no numbers, like of the voting, which people didn't like that either. He just says Beanie wins. Because do you think he was even counting the votes? No, he's just collecting money because he already knew the whole time he wasn't any Beanie and nobody wanted Beanie to be over, you see? It's just marketing, that's all it was. And then he puts out this cryptic message on the day when he announced Beanie won the uh, voting. He said, expect the unexpected. And then he just left it at that. So in the year 2000, Ty begins the re-release of Beanie Baby. But this time, it comes back different than it was before. He has new marketing schemes. And I believe this is when they started selling Beanie Babies in more places. I'm not sure. I couldn't find that um, in any article. But I did find that it says there was a big shift in marketing. So I'm assuming that's when Beanie started being sold in more places. Also, um, you might think, oh, that must be when the Millennium Bear came out, the re-release for 2000. And actually, the Millennium Bear came out in January of 1999. So that doesn't have anything to do with the 2000 re-release. There is a Millennium Bear that's worth money. It's valuable because there's a typo and um, there's only one N instead of two Ns. But that's any Beanie Baby, I think, with typos or errors they tend to be worth money. Those I think are the only ones that are worth money. With the shift in marketing came a lot of things that you never saw in the pre-2000 Beanie Baby. He started working with characters from popular TV shows. So that's when you start seeing SpongeBob, Dora the Explorer, Shrek the Third, Ice Age Dawn of the Dinosaurs. I'm looking at my notes by the way. Ice Age Dawn of the Dinosaurs Beanie Babies come out and they never did anything like that before. 2000. Beanie Baby was just a Thai thing. They didn't like work with other people. Then I saw comments about this in um, the Beanie Baby deep dive on TikTok and I wasn't sure what they were talking about and people were correcting this girl. If I can find the comment, I'll show it. I'm not sure. There's a lot of comments so I don't know if I can find it. But if I find it, I'll show it. People were correcting her saying, no, what you're talking about is from Webkins. But it's not, she was right, it is from Beanie Baby. And she started questioning herself going, oh, maybe I'm not remembering that right. Which I'm like, no, you were right. Cause I didn't remember it either. Cause I did Beanie Baby before 2000, a little bit after 2000, but not a lot. So the new line of Beanie called Beanie Baby 2.0 and they had a digital code which could be used on a website. And that's what she was talking about. But she was mentioning that and it doesn't seem like a lot of people remember this. So another thing with the re-release, there was a lot with the re-release. They did something called Beanie Kids. And I've seen pictures of these and they're kind of weird. After the relaunch is when Ty Warner really started acting shady. So let's get into it. Guess what he did? He um, hid large portions of his income in an illegal offshore account. It was discovered by the IRS in January of 2014. So he'd been doing this for years. It contained $107 million. Okay, so the IRS claimed it was one of the largest offshore accounts they'd ever found. So he made records with that. I'm going to briefly talk about Ty Warner's charitable donations because it all ties back into the court case. Now, another thing is only after the relaunch, he didn't do this before, he started making huge donations to charities. Remember, I had mentioned it started with when they did the voting. He put that to the Pediatric AIDS Foundation. 
Well, this continued. He um, gave six million to the Andre Agassi Foundation for underprivileged children in Las Vegas. He gave four point five million to the creation and development of the Ty Warner Park in Westmont, Illinois. He gave over one million Beanie Babies to children in Iraq and Afghanistan. And like, there's a lot more. I'm just not going to list them all. And that's all good. But he ended up using that later to help himself when he was in court, which is not so good. And it makes me question, was this, was there ulterior motive to all of his donations? Is there more to it that we're not, I'm, or that I'm not understanding? Hi, Alfie's on my lap and Ramona's right here, so I don't want to move and use the tripod. But I was noticing in this last clip, like, I'm coming off like the donations are bad. That's not what I mean. Those donations are great. I just found it fishy that he used the donations in his defense at court. It, I just found it strange because donations, I feel like, are a selfless thing. And then when you use them to your defense, that's, like, not very selfless. So what was his defense? How did he get out of this? Well, he used the person who had a larger offshore account and was caught for it as an example. Like he would compare himself to that person. He'd say, or his defense would say, okay, well that guy only got this many years and Ty, he did less money than that guy. So he can't have a larger sentence. Plus he gave all this money to charity. They used that in the defense to help him. So. Um, they argued he had less money, so he should have a lesser sentence. The guy that they used in court, his name's Igor Olenkoff, who had $240 million offshore, so more than double. And so they're like just comparing him to him over and over. And they brought up all Ty's donations, saying that that should count for something. Well, um, the court was initially going to give Ty Warner five years in prison. And with that defense that I just explained, they were get, able to get it down to just two year probation. So he did not go to jail at all. He also had to do, this is funny. He also had to do 500 hours of community service. Why am I laughing? Well, because he had to do that community service. He had his, he had to do it in three schools. So he can do it in any of the three schools. I think he could go around to any of the three. And they were in the Chicago area and they were high schools. So could you imagine being a high school student in um like 2014 so well maybe this would have been 2015 but your childhood you would have collected beanie babies most likely or you would have known someone who did and then having ty warner come to your school to do 500 hours of community service that would be so surreal anyway he also had to pay one hundred thousand dollars in fines 53 million dollars in civil penalties and $27 million in back taxes. That is the story of Beanie Baby, and that is my deeper dive on the subject. Hope you enjoyed. And here's some Beanie Baby bonus footage. All right, let's take a look at some of the tags. So this is a pre-2000 Beanie Baby. Do you see how the tag has the yellow star? Then they re-released, and this one came out in January, I believe. Let me just double check. January 26, okay, it says 2000 on it. Now this is something I'm not sure about because then there's this one, which is after 2000 also, and see how it just has the star, and this one says 2000. And so I wanted to check the year of this one, and it's September 25th, 2000. So these two are both came out in 2000, but they have different tags one in September and one in January. So I'm wondering, I'm not sure, I'm just wondering if the ones with 2000 on them are just right after that re-release, they put 2000 on it. And then after they'd been out for some time, they switched to this one. Again, I don't know. Something else I noticed about the newer ones is they have more like bright patterns and textures. Or if you look at like an old one, it's just a solid color. New one, old one. So those are, I have so many beanie babies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ella, all worthless. Oh, look what I found, <laughs> the millennium one. 
Do I have a typo? No, I already know I don't. <laughs> Look, I found the 99 Signature Bear, and this is the 2000. Did they do one each year, maybe? So the 2000 came out in 99. I wonder if the 99 came out in 98. I don't know. Oh, baby. Oh. All right, that was the end of my deeper dive. Ramona, look up. I hope you enjoyed it. Ramona, show them your eyes. Look how pretty. Sorry it was so long. <laughs> okay, say bye. Bye. Have a good day.